हाय प्रियांश हेलो ओके आई विल जस्ट वेट फॉर टू मिनट्स और मे बी वन मिनट सिंस वीर ऑलरेडी लिटिल लेट इन स्टार्टिंग एंड देन आई कैन स्टार्ट हाई रोशिया ओके ग्रेट सो टुडे वी आर डूइंग अ सेशन ऑन एक्रिलिक पेंटिंग एज हैज ऑलरेडी बीन शेयर विद यू थ्रू द बैनर हाई सिद्धि सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू नो वॉट एक्रिलिक पेंट्स बेसिकली आर हाई इंद्रानी लॉन्ग टाइम नो सी ओके सो बेसिकली एक्रिलिक पेंट्स आर अ वेरी फास्ट ड्राइंग पेंट दे आर मेड ऑफ अ पिगमेंट विच इज सस्पेंडेड इन एन एक्रिलिक पॉलीमर इमल्शन एंड इट ऑल्सो कंटेन्स प्लास्टिसाइजर्स एंड सेवरल अदर केमिकल्स सो वाई इज एक्रिलिक पेंट सो स्पेशल द स्पेशलिटी बिहाइंड एक्रिलिक पेंट्स इज दैट ऑल दो इट इज अ वॉटर बेस्ड मीडियम इट बिकम्स वॉटर रेजिस्टेंस वेन ड्राई so as a result we can use lots of layering techniques to sort of form those um, landscape details and illusions to give it more depth so acrylic paints if we look at the history of it it was first uh, patented in 1915 and it was uh, used primarily from the 1940s and apart from that um, i'm sure most of you here are artists and you will already know the basic properties of acrylics so let's start okay so let me just grab my pencil so i am using the menorah uh, canvas the menorah canvas yes i will be saving it and no i do not have a youtube channel unfortunately but uh, i am trying you know maybe in 2 3 years i'll create it so i'm using a menora canvas um this is a really good canvas uh, you know because uh, i've been using it as long as i can remember and it's really uh, you know fine grained so this is the canvas i'll be working on today and as you can see it's already uh pre primed okay uh, yani cannot hear me can anyone else hear me if anyone can hear me please leave a thumbs up okay, okay can you hear if you can hear me can you please give me any indication okay i'm going to assume you can hear me and yes this video will be saved okay so one of the first approaches i take to teaching is that i will not be showing you each and every step of this i will be showing you the individual elements of how to create a composition so that you can learn and create something yourself and uh, you can see the canvas i'll be working on today already has an underpainting so an underpainting is basically a coat of paint under your painting which uh, sets the tone the temperature and the mood of the painting so an underpainting has several uh, advantages and here since we are doing a very uh, you know um dusk uh, after dusk after evening kind of mood so i already used a dark uh, underpainting in that case what i can do is that i can go directly with the lighter colors okay so as it is a dark canvas i am going to start with a um, glass pencil okay so i am not going to do something directly similar to this let's do something similar so that you can learn something new as well and this is available as reference on my instagram anytime you want you can uh, use it as a reference and you can just tag me so one of the golden rules of composition is the rule of thirds whenever you are making a landscape so basically what the rule of thirds is that for example if i divide this canvas okay this light is creating a little problem so i'll hold it like this if i divide this canvas into three parts as you can see i am getting six boxes right so this is a grid so whenever you are making a landscape try to ensure that the main composition of your landscape is falling somewhere on the intersection of the grid lines 
what happens is that this makes your painting look a lot more dynamic compared to if you paint it in the center because the human eye is trained to follow movement so when you put movement in your painting it will automatically your eye will move along with the objects the second is never make your horizon in the center the horizon should always be at the top part okay so i'm going to treat this as the horizon let's make a small mountain type thing uh, far away hills we won't be adding much details to this um the foliage details will be added directly okay so for this let's draw a line like this and this will be your flower field okay and since we're going to be making something like you know um lavender so let's sketch out the part okay this is a very simplified version so that you know it, uh, i can complete it in one live session okay so if you clear with the drawing so i'm going to put it against the light now and as you know acrylics shine very much so i'm going to put it i'm going to take my palette and i'm going to show you how to mix the colors okay so um for any one of you who are not very uh, familiar with the color theory you can refer to my page i have a few videos on how to use color theory in landscape paintings uh, you can refer to them any time so i am taking a little bit of prussian blue and i will be adding a splash of purple to it okay now i'm taking my acrylic brushes and i'm going to very lightly dab it in water okay not too much water and i'm going to start placing the color as you can see since it's already has a black under painting i don't have to put a lot of color for it to look very bright it's already giving you that dusk feeling So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of white So when it comes to watercolors I always tell my students it's better to work from light to dark but the opposite when it comes to acrylics or gouache or oil it's always better to work from dark to light So as you can see the white is looking much more uh, vibrant on the black canvas compared to the white canvas. I'm going to be holding this up every few minutes so that you can see it against the glare of the light because I know this light is glaring a lot. Okay so now I'm just going to take colors randomly and just create natural streaks because you know in nature nothing is ever very perfect in fact one of the best ways to achieve the dynamic uh, to capture the dynamics of uh, nature is to be as loose with your painting as possible and as you can see I'm using very little water One of the biggest mistakes that uh, acrylic painters often do when painting on canvas is using too much of water. I mean water is okay for blending when you're doing it on a piece of paper, but when it comes to canvas try to use as little water as possible. Okay? As you can see there are streaks in the sky. So now I also want to give it a little bit of orange to show that the sun is setting. So let me take out my orange color. you can wash the brush in between because uh, if you mix purple and orange since on the color wheel they are complementary colors that is on the opposite sides of the color wheel so when you mix two complementary colors you usually end up with a very unflattering shade of brown okay so i got out my orange so the trick to blending two complement this is oil no no this is not oil paint this is acrylic paint um oil paints have a very different uh, you know way of painting uh, it's quite different it uh, these are all water soluble paints right so they have a different way uh, different technique to follow 
Okay, now I'm taking a little bit of orange over here, and don't worry if you cover the line. I'm just simply drawing a line. Now I'm taking a little bit of white, mixing a lot of orange with it, and I'm filling it in. As you can see, the orange is a very vibrant orange. very vibrant i'm taking a little bit more orange and uh, as with any painting white is always your best friend it's very important to keep white at hand right so i'm taking some white and blending it okay some more white blending now i'm going to mix some white and orange and i'm going to go over this again Now I'm going to use my fingers, put a little bit of paint on it, and I'm going to slightly swirl the paint on. A little more, swirl the paint on. As you can see, it's a very, very, you know, um, it's become very, very vibrant. So I'm going to just wipe my finger off. Okay, now yeah. I'm going to wa wash my brush off completely. Make sure there's no excess water on the brush by dabbing it onto your uh, napkin or tissue paper or whatever cloth you're using. Clean the brush well. Now take a little bit of white and just blend. Instead of the uh, complete blending that I have done in this one, I am going for a more streaky approach over here. So as you can see, I am going even down with the orange. And just make a few light streaks here and there so that it doesn't look too striated. Take some more white, you can go back. And don't be afraid to make mistakes with acrylics. Explore as much as you can because acrylics always provide you the opportunity to fix your mistakes. Okay, so now we're done with the sky. We'll wait for the sky to dry a little bit before we move on to the uh, hills. So in the next part, I'm going to take out my green. It's a sap green. Let me put it onto my plate. Now taking this raw sap green onto my brush, I'm going to paint this portion. Okay. Just a flat color. No excess water, nothing. Flat color, as I said. Okay, this has given me the base for the grass. Now, while the grass is wet, Okay, I'll just, I'll just show it to you like this once, okay? Like this. So while the grass is still wet, I'm going to take some Indian yellow.
and again going with the same streaky effect what i'm going to do is i'm going to without washing my brush i'm going to load my brush with yellow this uh, particular technique is called double loading and i'm going to slightly add it at the horizon this basically shows the setting sun you know the setting sun over here is putting have you done outlining no i don't do a lot of outlining in general when i'm working on a canvas and especially with a painting like this when it's a very loose you know a very small very loose an abstract style of painting so i haven't done anything so i'm slowly building up layers as you can see just using plain indian yellow you can also use a chrome yellow okay now i'm going to take some more lemon yellow and very lightly with the lemon yellow i'm going to add a few highlights here and there loading adding highlights uh again if you guys have any questions related to anything about art not just acrylic paintings my mediums uh, are um, gouache and acrylics mostly but i have also done uh, watercolors in my art school so i also have some knowledge of that although it's not my preferred medium if you have any questions you can ask me okay so you can see that it's having a very you know natural effect right now any more detailing uh, no i usually do not take that approach of letting the first color dry first you may do it again as i like to say there is no one you know set way of painting every artist has their unique style their unique methods yes i did take classes from basics to advanced i've been taking for a lot of years but right now um i'm not taking any classes and i will, will not be for the next one year since i'm shifting to another country so after one year in 2023 maybe i'll resume taking classes So as i can see this isn't completely dried yet so we'll wait for a little time till then uh, again if you have any questions related to art uh, you can keep on asking me we'll wait for just 2 minutes because acrylics dry really fast so let's wait Yeah um uh, bullet journals uh, you can follow my other lettering account i do post a few bullet journals there you are completely free to take inspiration from there but uh, as i said i won't be teaching anything right now you can also follow me on pinterest because even on pinterest i uh, put a lot of bullet journal ideas and uh, the references i use for painting uh, they are all there on my pinterest so the same paintings i make from the references you can follow them and they are mostly copyright free references yeah i'll i'll take more live sessions with menora in the future um i'll for sure i'll uh, make one session completely about how to paint clouds and the different methods okay great so the prussian blue is still here and it's still uh, you know still more or less yeah it's more or less wet other than these what can be done on black canvas i think loose florals look this is not a black canvas by the way just to let you know this is a menora white canvas it's primed uh, what i did is that i painted it black you can loose florals good uh, loose florals are very good for uh, you know black canvas loose florals or you can do portraiture on black canvas that also looks good Okay how to find where to highlight 
Okay, this is a very good question. In fact, uh, it's it's actually a very good question, and it's one of the first things we ever learn, you know, in uh, art school. The thing is, uh, you need to establish where your light source is. Okay, so for example, for me, the light source is somewhere here in the horizon. Okay, so automatically somewhere here. So automatically you can see that my majority highlights are all centered around here, and as I move away. the highlights are getting lesser and lesser let me remove it like this okay now i'm going to take a small detailing brush a small detailing brush and i'm going to take some prussian blue and some yellow create a very dark green and add some highlights here these are not highlights basically these are shadows these are to show some uh, you know uh, basic um, what do you call them foliage without going into much details okay i'll show it to you like this okay now let's let this dry we'll put some foliage over here and here later so let's go on to the this was the background part now we'll go on to the main part where we'll put all the details so i'm going to take some green and i'm going to lightly mark out like this like this like this and this okay now that we've demarcated Now that we've demarcated this zone, let's fill this with our purple. So I still have some Prussian blue left here. I'm going to add some red to it to create purple. now to brighten this up i'm going to add some actual purple to it okay so i've got a dark brilliant purple now i'm just going to add it here
let's just do a flat wash right now okay i'll just protect it against the glare this way you will be able to see better Okay, till this one dries. Let's uh, start with a little bit of foliage here. So for the foliage, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some black and. and i'm going to very lightly make a dabbing motion very lightly like this you won't be able to see it right now but once it's done you will be able to see it Okay, I'm not giving a lot of foliage over here because I'm also going to be doing something here. So I'm going to take some more black and draw, put a bush-like thing with foliage. I'm using the dabbing technique here as well. Okay, so I'll just refine the shape of this bush. Great, now that I'm happy with it, let this dry. Till then, since I'm doing a very, you know, streaky sky, I'm going to take some plain white and I'm just going to draw a small little dot over here, very small. Now I'm going to add some white to this purple make a light color and just add dots like this to indicate far off flower fields this is where we are slowly building up the details now Again, I always tell my students there is no need to copy exactly what I'm doing. If you want to do something else, please feel free. More than learning, art is about expressing. So if you, if you want to succeed as an artist, you really need to get into that mindset of creating instead of, you know, just producing and copying.
as I come closer, I'm going to make them a little more far apart. Like this. Okay. And let's leave it right here. Okay. Now let's go back to this foliage. So I'm going to take a little bit more of green. You know, anyone who wants to, it's it's really nice. I I felt very good hearing this, Nihal. Um, if I'm pronouncing your name correct, it was very good to hear it because uh, you know most of the times I see people saying, "Please teach me everything, teach me everything." It uh, it made me very happy to hear that you want to try doing it on your own. You can follow me on Pinterest. I have all my references there. They are very easy references. Just pick any one of them and start doing. And you can also reach out to me personally to show them. Okay, so I mixed sap green and uh, black to create a lighter shade. This is called the intermediary shade. Okay, so with the intermediary shade, I'm going to again use the dabbing technique to create my foliage. The Thank you, Yukino Kari. Again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering anyone's name. Okay, so I'm using really light dabbing. Okay, so let's go to this. The same intermediary shade again. Dabbing. When making trees and foliage, never skip the intermediary um, shade because this is the one that actually adds the depth to the trees and bushes. Hi Lumia. Okay, now let's take some green and let's just refine the high the horizon we're just going to refine it okay so this is what is done so far I'm sorry, I was drinking some water. Okay, so let me take out my damaged brush. It is very important to prime the canvas uh, because of several reasons. Um, one is that uh, canvases, they come with a grain. You know, as you can see here also, there is a grain to the canvas. Um, so what happens with the grain is that when you try to put too much details, it's not very possible. This is a damaged brush that I use for foliage. So whenever, uh, you know, you have uh, grains in your paints, paintings, when you want to do something very detailed, the details don't really pop up. What your gesso does is that it flattens the canvas or otherwise instead of priming it, what else you can do is use a sandpaper to rub uh, the grains out. The best technique is uh, to use gesso. 
uh, or acrylic white paint. If you're just starting out, just use acrylic white paint or you can use a, a medium called gesso and just put one coat of it over the canvas. That primes it. And priming a canvas also has another very good uh, effect of making the canvas, uh, the colors look actually much more brighter than it would. I am going to take some portrait pink now. I always like to temper my greens with some pink. I temper them with some pink. It creates a much more, you know, um, natural shade of green i it's basically this technique is called muting of colors you know if possible i'll i'll take one entire session on you know uh, color theory and how to uh, navigate colors so now i'm going to go back and very lightly with the edge of my brush i'm going to put the highlights This particular one need not be very detailed because uh, this is a background bush. So it's okay if, you know, you just put some things and let it be. Now let's come to this one. Same technique, I'm loading my paintbrush with paint. Uh, in case of acrylic paint, if you're not planning on selling the piece, it's okay not to varnish. But if you're using gouache, I'd uh, suggest you to varnish it because gouache is uh, not a light resistant medium. Which means that with exposure to light, the colors get dull. So you need to varnish those. In case of acrylic, it's okay. It's not extremely necessary to varnish it. But of course, um, in my professional opinion, I will always suggest that do varnish your paintings. As you can see, my highlights are all towards where the sunlight is coming from. And another trick here I'll show you is to use another lighter shade of green to demarcate between the grass and the tree. Let me just put in this particular color, then I'll go in with a lighter color. Okay, so I think my white has dried up. Let me take some more white. Where's my white gone? So this time I'm ditching this brush and I'm going in with an even thinner brush. This is a detailing brush, completely detailing. And with this whitish thing, I'm adding some highlights here and there. As you can see, this what happens is that this demarcates the bush from the background. But don't forget to put some in between the trees also because otherwise it's going to look very cartoonish.
so our uh, I'll, i'll also just take some white and add a little bit of flowers here and there just because i want to you don't need to just a little bit here and there Great. So now our background is completely done. Now let's. What color do you mostly do it, um, Shalini? If you can explain it a little bit more, your question. I'm sorry, the middle of the tree is uh, too light. Middle of the tree. I'm not sure uh, what you're trying to say by that. Um, anyway, if you're trying to say light cannot penetrate to a through a tree, if that's what you're trying to say, it's actually a very false conception because if you look at nature, right? Yeah, the best way to do a painting is to just look at photographs. There are thousands of photographs available online. Study those photographs. If needed, print out those photographs. Make a line where the uh, like draw the sun. If I show you the rays, how the sun rays will come. Uh, so uh, the sun ray doesn't really go straight. You know, a sun ray goes in all directions. A point has infinite number of directions. Um, if you're uh, well versed, uh, if you're not well versed, if you know a little bit of physics, you'll know that rays are not unidirectional, right? Also, photons move through tree particles. The photons aren't rays; they are particles, right? So the particles can move through the branches of the trees, and they will also reach areas like this. Okay. so um my advice will be uh, look at photographs look at uh, nature photography and study the light properly uh, you will automatically on your own you will be able to understand how to paint uh, or how to understand how the light comes okay so now i'm taking a rigor brush there's my purple i'm going to add a little bit of magenta to it just to make the color pop a little and now i'm going to take the magenta okay and let me show you this one okay so the same method i'm using here you will also use on the other three so i'll just show you one because we are also on a time crunch since this is a live session what i'm going to do is i'm taking a very medium purple and i'm just drawing lines like this okay just follow the direction of my brush follow the direction as you can see the individual lavender strands are moving in different directions I'm going to cover this entire area with this and then we're going to go with darker and lighter shades.
टिल देन अगेन इफ यू हैव एनी मोर कंस्ट्रक्टिव क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क मी Or if I have missed any of your questions before, and uh, you can, you want to ask it again, please ask. how to give texture to the painting okay uh, so if you're talking about uh, texture as in with just paints uh, you give texture using several uh, you know um, acrylic painting techniques for example you have things like um, dry brushing you have um, paintings like um, for example what else to give texture you can give sponging is another good way of giving texture you have dabbing you have impasto spattering uh, scraping these are all several uh, you know uh, acrylic painting methods or in other case if you want to give uh, texture it is uh, done using that impasto technique as i said so you can do that or you can use textured uh, there is something called texture paintings i am part i personally i'm not very well versed with that because i'm more into fine art compared to crafts but uh, i think uh, there is a, um, i think it's bala uh, bala nevarita on instagram she does a lot of textured art but if you are talking about texture using fine art techniques the techniques i just said those are the techniques to give uh texture to a painting a uh, portrait yes i do a lot of um, pet portraits i can draw human portraits i mean of course uh, since i went to art school i obviously learned portraits but i personally i'm not very fond of portraiture okay so as you can see i have basically covered it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some very little black very little let's find some empty space over here uh pop if you mean uh, megs uh, okay megs uh, 1004 if you mean uh, uh, like pop as in pop art yes of course pop art was a huge huge movement if you look at paintings by andy warhol um you can see that he has used acrylic paint to give a lot of texture to his paintings so yeah you can obviously do that see as i see there is no hard and fast rule there is no limit to your creativity my username my username is acrylic_tales Oh, pop as in plaster of Paris. Yes, of course. That's what I said. That's called texture art. So, uh, if you're talking about that plaster of Paris thing, um, Megs, uh, there is someone called Bala Nivedita. You can uh, search her. B A L A N I V E D H I T A. Uh, she's a texture artist only. So, I think she'll be a much better person to. Um, you know uh, guide you on this particular matter because i have never exper experimented with um, plaster of paris personally okay so now i'm adding some prussian blue a touch of black and i'm going to just add the highlights in the bottom part oh my uh, okay i'm going to write my username over here okay i'm trying to pin it 
I don't know how to pin it, but um, so Psalm T sixty eight. If you can just scroll a little, you can find it. Okay, so as you can see, I am adding some shadows in the bottom parts of the flowers. A few in between. Some here and there. As you can see, I'm avoiding this upper portion, this portion. Um, the winners of the giveaway, Yashasvi, yeah, I'm not the per person to, uh, you know, answer that because I'm simply a guest takeovering, uh, taking over Menorah today. So once uh, the session is done, you can reach out to them. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with some magenta. As you can see, I'm playing around with the colors and just adding different shades. The basic strokes are going to remain the same. Um, I haven't done a BFA, but yes, I uh, do have a diploma in art. I have been to art school. I used to have online classes, but um, since I'm shifting to another country, um, these all classes are, uh, stall, you know, uh, they're on a pause right now. Hello dear. I'm going to the UK. Now I'm going to take some Portrait pink and magenta. I have been drawing since a very, very long time, to be very honest. Okay, so using this pink, I'm not going to go very uh, in depth with the pink. I'm just going to add a few highlights here and there. Do not go overboard with the pink. I know it can seem very, you know, mm, tempting. But very light, be very light. I've been practicing for a very long time. I know it sounds cliche to say this, Yashisvi, but uh, you know, it's all about practice. It's all about learning the basics and being very true to yourself and, uh, you know, having faith. There are a lot of things actually. <laughs> and I really don't want to give a lecture. So all I can say is just believe and that you can do it and you know, take the necessary steps to make that belief a reality. Now let's take some uh, more purple. Mm. 
before getting started as a professional make sure that you uh, are completely okay like um, well versed with the basics you know the basics by heart not by rote by heart and uh, after that uh, you know just uh, get out there um, in st- i am no- i have a very love hate relationship with instagram as an artist and i'm pretty sure most artists do have a love hate relationship with it while it is a great platform to you know showcase your talent it's also a very draining platform which uh, you know takes away your creativity due to the constant pressure of creating so uh, the next thing this is a more uh, you know reddish purple that i'm putting now yeah as i was saying now you need to know whether you want to be an artist or you want to be a creator now i know a lot of people on uh, instagram who are great creators uh, amazing truly amazing but um, i don't know about them as an artist so uh, but there are several artists who are really good on this platform who uh, while they are not good content creators they are really good artists so you need to ask yourself whether you want to be a content creator or uh, an artist if you want to be an artist just be true to yourself you'll find your footing in the professional field and uh, if you want to be a content creator i really don't know how i can advise you on that because i myself i'm not one but apart from that what else you can do to be in the professional field is um, if you're very serious try to get an internship with uh, a really senior artist so someone who's well established in the field but of course i understand that is really difficult to do without the backing of a proper school Uh, i will please request people not to uh, you know post spam comments over here or to self promote in any way because we're not here to do that okay so basically this multiplied by 4 is what it's going to come up to be so as you can see beside these are very similar but not exactly the same all right um so this is also there step by step on my uh, page yes i will make a live uh, question and answer session don't worry um all my most of my paintings have a step by step so you can always uh, refer to that apart from that i am going to be closing the session in the next 1 minute so if you have any other questions please let me know i'll close it at 10 10 on dot Okay again I'll hold it up I know that I know there's a big glare Oh another small tip take your time making this don't hurry this will never be complete with this level of detail within 1 hour take your time be patient with yourself because each brush stroke counts Okay so I'm ending it in I'm ending it uh, you're welcome in 5 4 3 2 1 bye bye everyone good night